Could you maybe explain why we cannot take the derivative of x to the x power? The answer to your question is that, in fact, we have no issues with taking the derivative of x to the x power, but it's the issue that how people take this derivative. We cannot use the usual power rule for this. When we see x to the x power, if you just put the power to the front and then minus 1, and say the answer is x times x to the x minus 1. This right here is incorrect. It's not that we didn't simplify it. I know this is x to the first power times x to the x minus 1 power. We can add the exponents and say that's just x to the x power. But it's not the algebra. It's the calculus issue that's important, all right? By the way, if you do this, you see, you get back to the original. That's kind of cool, but of course it's wrong already, so it doesn't matter anymore. And another example is that if we take the derivative of, let's say, an exponential function, let's say we have 2 to the x power. Hmm. Well, if I put the x to the front and then minus 1 and say the answer is x times 2 to the x minus 1, well, this time I cannot simplify anything. But let me tell you, it's a calculus that's wrong. That's still wrong too. So what's the issue? Hmm, maybe because we have x in the exponent. So maybe let's try this one. What if I ask you to take the derivative of, let's say, 3 to the third power? I don't have x in the power anymore. Let's go ahead and put a 3 to the front and minus 1 and say the answer is 3 times this 3. 3 minus 1, I can work that out. It's just 2. This is still wrong. Oh my god, when do I really use that everybody's favorite power rule? Let me explain right here. This is the legitimate power rule. And I'm going to explain the correct answers for these three questions after that. The power rule says when we take the derivative of x to a power, right, to a power, and this right here has to be a number. And let's use m for it. Some people might use p for power. Doesn't matter. And it's meant to be a number. Let's say 17 or negative 2 or 1 half. In this situation, you can put the n to the front and then minus 1. And say the answer is n times x to the n minus 1 power. This right here is legitimate. So just a real quick example. If we take the derivative of, let's say, x right, x to the third power you see the difference between this and that i need to have the x in the base and then number for the power just like that this right here gives us what yeah put the power to the front and minus one three x squared this right here is legit and you why this kind of functions though so let me give you guys x to the third power graph it looks like this and now let's just pay attention to the slope of the tangent line to the curve. As we can see right here, if you draw a tangent segment, right, just go ahead and use your marker or your pen right there, you will see that the tangent line right here is with slope zero. So if you want to graph that, this right here is the original function. Let me just say this is y equals. And if you want to do the y prime, well, the slope right here is 0, so you have the 0 right here. And then, this is how to do it. If you kind of put a marker right here, you see that the slope right here is about 1. So if you just trace down, you go to the vertical value 1. You are graphing the slope value, so you have 1. Similarly, if you go to somewhere right here, you will see that the slope right here is about 1. And then you have 1 right here as well. right? And again, just kind of re-estimate, it's impossible for me to do it perfectly. But anyway though, if you just have enough points, you see right here, the slope is getting bigger, so you have to go higher. Same thing, but here, the slope is steeper, right? The tangent segment is steeper, so you have to go higher. Then you can see that we end up with x to the second power case. It's a parabola. And in fact, we have a constant in the front, the 3 in the front, just like that. Now, let's go ahead and explain why 
this is incorrect. Well, if we want to differentiate 3 to the third power, what's 3 to the third power? Worked out! Just 27. It's not 9, okay? It's 27. So if you're taking the derivative of the function 27, what's 27? It's just a function right here. y equals 27, constant function. What's the slope right here? 0. What's the slope right here? 0, and so on. The slope of a horizontal line is just 0, so it's its derivative. And I'm pretty sure a lot of calculus teachers have done this to your students. Right? All right, anyway, though, next one, exponential function. What if we have to differentiate 2 to the x? This is an exponential function. Here's the deal. This is how 2 to the x looks like. And if you do the tangent line segment, you will see that this right here, it's not 1, all right? And you will see that it's just going to be a little bit down here. And then maybe right here is 1, so it's a little bit higher. The slope right here is getting to be flat, so the slope is approaching 0, so it's like this. And if you connect the dots, you will see that, in fact, this and that are very similar. The truth is, you still end up with 2 to the x. This part stays the same, but you will multiply by a constant ln of the base, which is ln2. And this is the derivative for that. And you can imagine, if we have e to the x, you will just get e to the x times ln e, right, for its derivative. ln e is 1. So the only function that you get back its derivative is just itself, besides 0, it's just e to the x. For the last one right here, let's focus on the base x. We don't like to have base x in calculus. We like to have base e. All right? So what we can do is, we can say this is taking the derivative of, let's write this as e to the ln x. Because e and ln cancel, we still get the x back. And then raise that to the x power. Now you can see, we have this to that power, so we can just multiply the powers. This is the same as taking the derivative of e for the base, and then x times ln x. Now, we can just take the derivative. Taking the derivative of e to the something, so this is like a box right here. If you want to check out my chain rule video, I use the box to kind of help us visualize. Taking the derivative of e to the box is just e to the box. So we still have e to the same thing. The box right here stays, right? stays the same. But we have to use the chain rule. We have to multiply by the derivative right here. And the derivative right here is x times that, so product rule, x times that. Keep the first function times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second is 1 over x. And then we add the second function, which is ln x, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. So that's the work. Base e to that power, all right? And then finally, what's e to the x ln x? It's not just this, it's not just this, it's not just that. Yes. And in fact, yeah, when we have x to the x power, this thing right here repeats. But we have this extra thing right here. x times 1 over x is just 1, and then plus ln x, just like that. So, this is how you legitimately take the derivative of x to the x power and be super, super careful whenever you have to take the derivative of a power case. Make sure you don't make any of these mistakes. Yes, that's it.